They have fought wars, been in combat, and served our country. But for some veterans, their toughest battle has been getting timely health care through the Southern Nevada VA. 13 Chief Investigator Darcy Spears talks to VA insiders about the system many say is failing our heroes. The Southern Nevada VA healthcare system is ranked by federal regulators as a two star facility, and that's out of five. Veterans say it's earned that low ranking based on long wait times and missed diagnoses. VA staffers, including numerous doctors, describe a culture of fear and retaliation for those who dare question administration. Though the VA calls their allegations completely false to the point where airing them would be irresponsible, we disagree. We believe everyone needs to be heard, and these are their stories. And this is actually me flying. Robert Doe was an Air Force helicopter pilot trained to rescue. This is me stationed in Japan. But on December 5th of last year, it was Robert who needed help. And for some reason, all of a sudden, they had this chest pain all the way across my chest. Right away, Robert went to the nearest hospital. Then they gave me the option to stay in the hospital, civilian hospital that I went to, or go home and see my primary care provider within two days. He chose the latter and tried to schedule an appointment with his primary doctor at the VA. And the response I got was, please make sure to do labs one to two weeks before appointment. Robert didn't have one to two weeks. I try to do things through the system the way it's supposed to be done. But the system let him down. As co-founder of the Veterans Transition Resource Center, Robert knew he had to be proactive. With help from co-founder Jim Littner, who called higher ups at the VA, Robert finally got a cardiology consult on December 21st. And they said, we, we don't have any appointments until February. I said, that's not going to work for me. Through the Veterans Choice Program, he could get an appointment outside the VA system in mid-January, but that didn't work out either. They called the day before to cancel. Ultimately, what was supposed to take 48 hours took 48 days. Then what happened after his angiogram stunned him. I woke up at the end of the day with a stent installed, and one of the techs told me, well, you had 95% blockage. And I'm like, Really? Really, he's lucky to be alive. I, I was angry at the VA. So why can't the VA see patients like Robert in a timely manner? Things need to change. The culture there needs to change. Dr. Brian Werner worked at the VA for over nine years. He quit out of frustration in February. The leadership there is, is very self-serving. But when it comes to executive management positions, they don't follow the rules. Which he and many others say directly impacts veterans. He specifically called out the former director, Peggy Kearns, for receiving multiple sessions of physical therapy and the VA's chief of staff, Dr. Ramu Kamandori, for getting an ultrasound examination on his leg. And this was during normal business hours when veterans should be receiving care. Neither Kearns nor Dr. Commandori are veterans. Essentially cutting to the front of the line, cutting in front of veterans, not paying for the service and doing it completely off the record. The VA tells us former Director Kearns and Dr. Commandori were authorized to receive medical care at the VA under occupational health guidelines. We were unable to reach either of them personally for comment. Dr. Werner believes raising red flags over their free health care and line skipping sealed his fate at the VA. He was suddenly removed from his post in physical medicine and rehabilitation and placed in a non-clinical role without explanation, making one less doctor available to veterans seeking care. We've spoken to more than a dozen current and former VA staffers, many of them doctors, who say that's unheard of in a medical setting and Dr. Werner's situation is not isolated. They say staff morale at all levels is low because leadership often promotes underqualified people. Morale was terrible. People were unsure whether they were going to have a job. Dr. Victoria Smith recently retired. She would have stayed another two years, but says the toxic environment was too much. The VA is a numbers company. 
I, there's no other way of looking at it. Dr. Smith says the push to meet new wait time standards set after the nationwide VA scandal in 2014 is part of the problem. They're unattainable. I mean, absolutely unattainable. Not attaining the strict wait time standards means an even lower rating. And if the VA falls to one star, Smith says the entire leadership team believes it'll be out. So those we spoke to say leadership is always looking for scapegoats. When we asked the VA for an on-camera interview, they did something we've never seen before. The VA declined to address any issues unless doctors Werner and Smith provided signed and notarized releases, allowing the VA to, quote, research and discuss their conduct and performance. Both doctors saw this as nothing more than an attempt at character assassination and declined to sign. So the VA sent a statement saying that prevents them from commenting about the the allegations, except to say they believe the allegations have no merit, according to the VA's internal review. We told the VA repeatedly it was not just those two doctors raising concerns. The complaints come from 12 current and former employees, including doctors, nurses, and support staff, all painting a similar picture. Zero respect for staff. Logistical roadblocks making jobs difficult. Extremely high turnover and very low morale. Immense pressure to make numbers look good. Providers who identify problems singled out and subject to retribution. Staff who transferred from other VAs are shocked to see how this VA is mismanaged. All of this impacts veteran care. Sources say the staff vacancies and high turnover mean longer wait times and difficulty building provider-patient relationships. And it's a sad situation. I, I hate seeing our veterans be short shifted like this. The VA says in its statement that employee satisfaction and quality have improved considerably and inpatient satisfaction ratings are some of the highest in Las Vegas. Veteran advocate Jim Littner agrees the Southern Nevada VA has improved in some areas, but. When you have people in there that want to be a part of the solution, want to be proactive, they get shut down. There's no question about that. All the doctors and staff members we spoke to say our VA needs a change in leadership and direction, and the whole system needs to address whistleblower retaliation and the culture of punish the messenger. They say that extends all the way up to the office of Inspector General. We have Southern Nevada VA's entire statement on our website at KTNV.com. Darcy Spears, 13 Investigates.